Hi, this is Mariah. Welcome to your Daily Mana Day 137. Today we're going to read Numbers chapter 20, and it's one of the sad chapters we have to get through. The Death of Miriam And the people of Israel, the whole congregation, came into the wilderness of Zin in the first month, and the people stayed in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there. Now there was no water for the congregation, and they assembled themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people quarreled with Moses and said, Would that we had perished when our brothers perished before the Lord! Why have you brought the assembly of the Lord into this wilderness, that we should die here, both we and our cattle? And why have you made us come up out of Egypt to bring us to this evil place? It is no place for grain or figs or vines or pomegranates, and there is no water to drink. Did they forget what happened to the grumblers last time? I mean, wow. They thought it would be better to be dead than alive. That's how ticked off they were. Then Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly to the entrance of the tent of meeting, and fell on their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the staff, and assemble the congregation, you and Aaron your brother, and tell the rock before their eyes to yield its water. So you shall bring water out of the rock for them, and give drink to the congregation and their cattle. And Moses took the staff from before the Lord as he commanded him. Then Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said to them, Hear now, you rebels! Whoa, so much for his humility! Humble before God, not before the people. Shall we bring water for you out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock with his staff twice. And water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their livestock. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Oh, they're in trouble now. Because you did not believe in me to uphold me as holy in the eyes of the people of Israel, Therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land that I had given them. These are the waters of Meribah, where the people of Israel quarreled with the Lord, and through them he showed himself holy. Moses, you should have gave the credit to God, and said, The Lord is merciful, he is going to give you water when I hit it twice. But Moses got all ticked off, he's like, Ah, you, I'm sick of you people. Here, you whiners, here's your stupid water. Even though Moses was right to be mad, I mean, he had reason to be mad, but he did not give credit or glory to God. He took it on himself to be the miracle worker. He's like, do I have to bring that water from this rock by hitting it? No, it was the Lord. The Lord told him to do that, but he didn't give God the glory. He made himself look like he was the man because he was sick of these people grumbling. He was doing good up to this point. So we're going to read what happens next. Edom refuses passage. Edom are the descendants of Esau, Jacob's brother. So the descendants of the brothers meet it again, but unfortunately not on so friendly terms. Moses sent, from, ha, Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the king of Edom. Thus says your brother Israel, You know all the hardship that we have met, how our fathers went down to Egypt, and we lived in Egypt a long time. And the Egyptians dealt harshly with us and our fathers. And when we cried to the Lord, he heard our voice and sent an angel, the angel of death, and brought us out of Egypt. And here we are in Kadesh, a city on the edge of your territory. Please let us pass through your land. We will not pass through, the, through field or vineyard, or drink water from a well. We will go along the king's highway. We will not turn aside to the right hand or to the left until we have passed through your territory. But Edom said to him, You shall not pass through, lest I come out with the sword against you. And the people of Israel said to him, We will go up by the highway, and if we drink of your water, I and my livestock, then I will pay for it. Let me only pass through on foot, nothing more. But he said, You shall not pass through. And Edom came out against them with a large army and with a strong force. Thus Edom refused to give Israel passage through its territory. So Israel turned away from him. 
And thank goodness they didn't have the the gall to try to fight back. They just like, all right, we're gonna peacefully turn around. Sorry, sorry we bugged you. Man, Moses is about to lose his other sibling, Aaron, in the same chapter. And they journeyed from Kadesh, and the people of Israel, the whole congregation, came to Mount Hor. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron at Mount Hor, on the border of the land of Edom, Let Aaron be gathered to his people, for he shall not enter the land that I have given to the people of Israel, because you rebelled against my command at the waters of Meribah. Take Aaron and Eleazar his son, and bring him up to Mount Hor. Strip Aaron of his garments, and put them on Eleazar his son. And Aaron shall be gathered to his people, and shall die there. Moses did as the Lord commanded, and they went up Mount Hor in the sight of all the congregation. So man, that must have been a long walk, knowing that that was going to be the last place you were going to see. But that was your spot you were going to die. You know, like, just imagine just walking there, knowing you weren't going to come down. That must have been very surreal, sad, and a little scary. I don't know. <laughs> and something. And Moses stripped Aaron of his garments and put them on Eleazar his son. And Aaron died there on the top of the mountain. Then Moses and Eleazar came down from the mountain. And when all the congregation saw that Aaron had perished, all of the house of Israel wept for Aaron thirty days. And that was our reading of Numbers chapter 20. So a pretty depressing and exhausting chapter. I mean, if you were those people living in that time... I mean, wow, Miriam died. The Bible doesn't indicate any type of punishment for this. I mean, remember, she was quite a bit older than Moses. She was a young girl that um, watched her baby brother Moses being put in a basket made of reeds and uh, made waterproof with pitch, put in the river Nile, and watched the basket to see what would happen to the baby, hoping that someone would pick it up, and thankfully they did. It would happen to be the princess, Pharaoh's daughter, so she's quite a bit older than Moses and Aaron. So she most likely just died from natural causes. Not so with Aaron. Um, he was specifically judged by God for failing to give God the credit. Well, him and Moses both failed. As we'll read in future readings, Moses himself will be denied entrance into the promised land. He will get to see it. And just like Aaron, he's going to climb a mountain knowing that he was not going to come down. So that must have been very surreal, just knowing it. You're walking to the very place where you're going to die, and you're going to die that day within moments. And I just imagine all the emotions he could have been feeling at that time. Um, Aaron died sadly, not being able to see the promised land. You know, um, but Moses thankfully did. At least he got to see it and know that God was going to keep his promise. Um, so this goes to show you that in order to stay humble, it requires patience, perseverance. I mean, Moses and Aaron were doing good for a while, but when they lost their patience, I mean, they were humble before God, but then when it came to, to talk to the people, they lost their temper. Well, I mean, Moses did, and Aaron did not speak up to correct Moses or stand up for God and say, Hey, God's the one who's going to provide water for this people, not you, Moses. You're just a man. Why are you exalting yourself as if you have some kind of power to do this. It was God that told us what to do to give water to the people. But Moses made it sound like it was him saying, oh you rebels, look, do I have to strike this rock to make water come out for you? It's like, Moses, it wasn't you, it was God. And um, he was humble before the Lord, but because he lost patience with the people, he wasn't like that before the people. He was yelling at them, calling them rebels. But I mean, he should have been more like, alright people, um, the Lord has told us that he's going to come through again. He's faithful. All we have to do is just hit this rock twice as he commanded, and he will provide water for you and for your cattle and livestock. But that's not what he said. So unfortunately, he's going to pay a price of dying, not entering the promised land. Um, and then there was the Edomites. Now the Edomites came from Esau, Israel's brother, because, you know, Israel... Originally was named Jacob, but then God changed his name to Israel. And last time when Israel and Esau met, they were friends. Um, they made amends. Esau forgave him, um, welcomed him, wanted um, Jacob to live next to him. 
you know, because he saw that God was blessing him, so he wanted some of that blessing for himself. But, um, yeah, so they left on good terms, but uh, um, not, so, I don't know, somehow the descendants, the Edomites, saw Israel as a threat. Perhaps the Spirit of the Lord warned them not to let Israel go through, because maybe God wanted to teach the people Israel more lessons about humility and patience, and so he warned them in the Spirit not to let them go through, even though they would, probably wouldn't have harmed them or started any trouble. Maybe he actually saw how Israel was acting. Um, he heard the reports about God, how he's been merciful, how he saved them. But he also heard reports about how um, they were grumbling against Moses several times. Like maybe somehow there was just people and they just overheard the commotions of the people yelling, plotting mutiny. It's like, well, if they can't even be faithful to their leader or to God, how can I trust them to walk through my territory without causing problems? So I don't know. Bible doesn't give us a reason why Edom refused passage. I'm just speculating. But anyways. So for tomorrow, we're going we're gonna to read chapter 21. It's, it's kind of interesting. It's about, we're going to talk about Arad destroyed, the bronze serpent. So there's going to be some venomous snakes that cause harm to the people. The song of the well. King Sihon defeated, as well as King Og. And those two guys are very big men. They are abnormally tall, very strong dudes, so that's kind of interesting. But that's for tomorrow. For now, I just want to say thank you for listening. I hope you have a great day. God bless. Stay humble to the faith. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.